All right, everybody, here we go. The final run of day two of Launch Party 2022. Get those dog jams in the chat. Let's go. Let's go. So, everybody, thank you so much for all the support, for all the donations, and obviously, we're going to have a great day tomorrow. Uh, we have one final run for you today, and we're not going to waste any time getting into it. So, without any further ado, uh, we're going to take one final pause, let you hear one more message from our charity, Save the Children, and when we come back, we'll be live with Ocarina of Time, Defeat Ganon, No SRM, CAC Road. One hundred years. That's how long caring people like you have been supporting Save the Children and changing lives. Our story began when our founder, Eglantine Jeb, fought to save children whose lives were devastated by war, a cause that became the first global movement for children. A true changemaker, she was the first to declare that every child has the right to grow up healthy, educated, and safe. For 100 years, we've been doing whatever it takes for children, every day and in times of crisis, in the US and around the world, changing the lives of over 1 billion children. Join us in our centennial year, because you too can change lives. One small act of generosity creates lasting change for children that ripples throughout their lives, transforming their futures and ours. Changing a life lasts a lifetime. Um, all right, we're ready to go in three, two, one. All right, everyone, we're here. We're live. It's it is time. It's CC Shark. <laughs> Man, this costume is certainly something. <laughs> <laughs> C C shark do 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 do. C C shark do 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 do. I have a thing that um, plays the sound, but it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I made it work the other day, but oh well. Alrighty. Well, we are playing uh, Ocarina of Time, which is a uh, a, a classic speed game here, so, uh, you know, this has been around for so long, and, you know, we don't get too many, like, any percent submissions for, um, speed docs on. It's usually the longer categories, like MST and all dungeons and stuff, so, uh, yeah, I think, I think we've done it, but, yeah. It's been a while, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so here I am, ready to run. He's running for you. He's the first member of the Speed Docs crew. Uh. Right. See, see. All right. Well, give yourself a countdown. And I gotta find the window. I gotta tell you, I'm I'm kind of struggling doing this whole restream myself option. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. It's, we'll make yeah. it through. Alrighty. Um. Well, we have a three-minute cutscene at the beginning to talk about stuff. So, in the meantime, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, three, two, one, go. All right. Let me see if I can get this a little situated better. There you are definitely go. being eaten by the shark. Yes. Metaphorically and, you know. Uh, Why is he restreaming himself? So... We have a little inside baseball here. We have a rule where no runs can start after midnight. Yes. Unless you restream them yourself. Mm-hmm. So because that is so that Quo uh, is not abused or taken advantage of or feels cheated. Yes. That is his... He, he's got a hard out. 
Yeah, he 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 commits to a twelve hour event. Anything extra, he's not here for it. So uh you know, we wanna give you the CC block. CC also like streams all the time. Yeah. Like so it's not like this is not that crazy. It's not that hard. Yeah. I just gotta like balance like two extra plates. It's, it's plate spinning. Yeah. It's plate spinning. It's it's because what you're not seeing is that normally when you're restreaming, it takes up a monitor. It, it really right? does. So he's got three, which is, you know, two more than some of you have. I have three, and I get over... I, my, my setup is eaten alive for hosting stuff alone. You know, then you got to have chat and, you know, Discord. When you're doing commentary, one window has to be Discord. Just exactly. Like, it's very cumbersome. It is. There's a lot going on, but you know what? That's because we're running a big operation here. Because we're trying to levels. raise money. That's right. We've got yeah, levels here. Exactly. Uh, ogres are like onions. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. So, you know, your link, Navi is, and you're the boy without a fairy, and Navi's like, the Deku Tree is like, go to the boy in the forest without the fairy. That's right. And Navi's like, hey, listen, I'm I'm gonna go. Oh no, I hit the fence. And then, uh, yeah. So that's the story, and then we're having a nightmare, uh, and Navi wakes us up, and that's she breaks into our house. You know that is and, true. Uh, that's uh, that's the lore that you missed when we were talking about plate spinning. Yeah. Also, it's in Japanese. Indeed. So, uh, one thing I wanted to touch on, you know, just for generals purposes. Uh, like, kind of like with the short hike run where I challenged myself to, uh, to learn a run and sort of make my own route for it. Um, this is kind of not the exact same thing. So I'm following a route which is obsolete now. Um, this isn't, well, I guess this is more like a beginner category, but, um, this is the route that got me into speedrunning. Um... Back in, like, 2014, whenever I first started watching, um, one of the speedruns I saw was posted on, like, Reddit or YouTube or something that I saw, and it was Narcissa with an 1810, which was such an incredible run that I was dumbfounded, and I said, I have to learn how to speedrun this route. So, even though there are faster routes, and, uh, there are new tricks and things like that, I'm like, you know what? Nah. I want to learn the route that got me into speedrunning. And maybe one day I'll get around to the other one, but... I just like this route. This route is just a lot more fun for me. You know, I think that the, the tricks are cooler, and I think that stuff is more fun. So this is more my speed. So kind of in the same vein of, like, this isn't doesn't have to be optimal. I just want to do it this way. So... Yeah. I mean, for those that don't know, Ace is arbitrary code execution. You're like hitting sticks with other sticks and standing on pixels and doing very precise things to trigger like code execution in the game's memory. So you like warp to the credits. Yeah. That's it's really hard. It's it's it is like a novelty. Mm -hmm. It is like the SpongeBob ice cream. It is like, <laughs> "Oh, that's interesting. I wonder how they make that." It also looks like kind of dumb. And it doesn't taste very good. SRM is really interesting, but visually speaking, it's a lot of Link jumping into corners and picking up chests that aren't there. You know? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, every item in the game is in this chest in the Forbidden Woods. So now I'm a child that has all the items in the game, and now I just am going to beat the game with three hearts because I'm a gamer. Yep. Right. Real quick, I am lining up with a corner in the wall here, and I'm going to do what's called a uh, water escape. Hopefully I get it right. Nope, oh, that's all right. I'm going to try it one more time. I have a backup if this doesn't work. Dang. That's all right. I practiced it, but it's it's finicky. It is a frame-perfect uh, jump slash, but luckily we have a backup. We're going to navy dive. So talking to Navi as we fall off that rock, we fall into the water and we'd have like maximum gravity. So we just sink to the bottom, which lets us get out of uh, the Lost Woods before we're supposed to. 
And the reason that we're making this detour is we need to get a bottle specifically so that we can uh, do a trick that I'll explain later. But we're doing it for the bottle. Yeah. So my my earlier point was that like there's just cooler tricks in this little category that I think are visually interesting, which I think is why it it resonates with so many people. I think it's why it resonated with so many people that watched our sister play. You know, I think it's why so many people picked up this category, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't know, you're, you're going to know here in a minute. But it is the the perfect balance of broken and visually interesting in a way that like a five minute category or a three minute category just can't. Yep. You know, so real quick. Oh, no. OK, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so what I did there is uh, I did a jump slash. And there's a trick where you can uh, maintain your speed out of water. Uh, there we go. Um, if you hold the analog stick in just the right position, and I had it, and then I dropped it, because it's a very precise position. But I think I can make it into town. Ooh, all right, we did it. Hey! Yeah, Clock, I agree. I think some of the more recent stuff is a little too much. Like, there's a new trick, or not a new trick, it's the, the more current trick is um, GIM, which is get item manipulation, which is like, all right, I'm going to grab this ledge and then fall through it and then wait in this water for like 30 seconds for my camera to reset, and then uh, I'm going to just magically get a blue potion out of this chest. You know, it's like, this is really fascinating from a technical perspective, but in the same situation, it just doesn't look very interesting. It's also like really, really difficult. <laughs> so, like I said, I just like, nah, I'm not into it. Plus, I mean, we would miss out on chickens and this is everyone's favorite part of the run. Exactly. I think it's, I think that the new stuff is, it's where, you know, the speed run stuff stops and where like task stuff and like, the more like technical stuff kind of comes into play. Yeah. Like no one accidentally did ace. To, yeah. to the degree that we have now. Yeah, it took uh, years of very smart, very talented people to uh, write, you know, spreadsheets and fill out values and figure out a way to make it all work. You know, some of the reason why we do ace or the reason that we know how to do ace is because we've like D what's the word? Not debugged, but we've... Decompiled? Decompiled, that's the word. Thank you. We've decompiled, like, the entire game. So we know, like, every line of code. We know where everything jumps to. This line is going to execute and then jump to this line. It's like, yeah, we know how to fix that. Alrighty. So, um, those first four chickens are kind of their own set. And then these last three chickens are their own set. Um, I'm going to try and... Do this. So, uh, if you didn't know, chickens run the opposite direction from you. So it's important that I stand in a position where uh, the way I'm trying to go, they will go the opposite. So they are running towards the pen that way, and now I can just do this. Back walking is faster, in case you didn't know that. I need to put all these chickens in the pen in order to get a bottle. Oh, you didn't know? There we go. Alright, Andrew here is going to give us a bottle. Da -na -na -na. Nope, didn't mean to talk a second time. And fun fact, under this specific rock, and under a couple of specific rocks in the game, um, there are bugs, and we need bugs. Um, I'll explain more. You'll notice that when we have an item, um, or a, we capture an item like that, we actually hold the bottle in our hands, and uh, that's an important aspect that I will explain um, for the last bit here. But So we're going to do a save warp, so you can save anywhere in the game. And as child, if you are not in a dungeon and you save and quit, you will always return to your house in Kokiri Forest. And just like that, we've returned to where we're supposed to be with a bottle of bugs. Alrighty. 
and we collected uh, 40 rupees on our trip through the river. And that is enough to buy a shield here. And we need to have a sword and a shield to get past Mido. There are other ways to do it, but this is the easiest way. Otherwise, I have to do, like, frame-perfect jump slashes, and it's all... It's all nonsense. So, CJ, it's all nonsense. hi -o! Alrighty. So... Up next, we're going to be doing the Deku Tree, but we're not really going to be doing it. Um, I'll explain as we go. Alright, yada yada yada. Child, you have come. Please. There's an evil guy and he's gonna take down the world. Are you a bad enough dude to save the president's daughter? Oh, get in my mouth! Spit in my mouth! <laughs> Look in my eyes! <laughs> I can't. <laughs> 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 this is not speed tech. I just like spamming the shield button. All right. So here we are. We are inside the Deku tree. And uh, first things first, I got Deku sticks. And now I'm going to get Deku nuts. Nut. 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 All righty. And we're going to equip like that. Uh, so, Navi has a little text box that comes up the first time you approach vines. Uh, but if you pull out a stick, uh, you cannot be interrupted with a cutscene or with a conversation. So, uh, there's that. And fun fact, if you backflip onto this chest, you can then jump to uh, the uh, that chest there. And, uh, and you can avoid that whole text box. And please don't bully me. Please don't tease me. <sighs> All right, I somehow was uh not on the ledge good enough or on the thing good enough. That's all right. All right, cool. We didn't get bullied on the way up, except I did drop the ball. But that's okay. We'll get there. All right. So this is the important part. Oh, that didn't work. It's all right. Just gonna wait a second to reset this. There we go. Doing that little setup there, make sure that we, um, we are set up to do this trick, which I think I missed. Yep, that's okay. There is a one frame window. No, I think it's two frames, actually. It's a two frame window to uh, do a jump slash, and then you can uh, bounce off of the wall. Come on, there you go. You can bounce off of the wall and land on that ledge above. That's all right. Like I said, it is a two frame trick. It is pretty tough. There we go. All right. Well, this is going swimmingly. hi -o! All right. So this is the backup here. I need to line up my sword with that sort of black texture on the side. Do this angle. And then I do a side flip into a roll. And on a particular frame of animation, I need to change to holding up. Nope. That is too late. Pause buffering is hard, guys. I promise. Come on. Shield turn. Thank you. One more frame. Come on. You got it. You got it. Woo! All right, now do the thing. I didn't do the thing. <laughs> ah, you know, I practiced this. I really did. You. He really did. I was there. Luckily, this is the last run of the night. I'm not uh, keeping anybody waiting here. There we go. Hey, we hey, did it! Fifth time's a charm! Yeah. You do know how to do this one now, though, which is nice. Yes, yes, I do. 
I watched you backflip in rage for yeah. a while. The thing is, is that he's like, this seems random, and I'm like, I'm doing everything right, and it's not working. But it's a very uh, tight timing. But also, you have to hit the C button. You can't, uh, you can't just, uh... <laughs> that was the big one when uh, Andrew came in. I, I was like, I was like, why would that matter? <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't think that it would. Okay, so I wasted a Deku Nut, so I had to get some extra ones. Oop. And I need to hurt myself, so I'm going to do that and bounce off and take damage when I land. All right. That was close. I almost died. Okay. That's all right. It's a little slow, but we got it. So we do the two, three, one trick and get these guys ready to go. And then they'll let me into the final chamber. And I needed to take a specific amount of damage because what's going to happen is, is I'm going to fight Goma and I want to... Uh, um, do a specific attack combo and then end it with a jump slash and I will hit Goma's hitbox and die at the same time. So we'll beat the boss and then we'll die and we'll restart at the start of Deku Tree. Um, and I need to leave this room because in order for me to do the next trick, I need to be able to get to the door and you just noticed the, the stone slab came down and wouldn't let me, uh, wouldn't let me leave. So... All right, let's see here. There we go. I Easy practiced that money. one a lot. Okay. Now that's down. We have the hardest trick in the run, which is uh, a bit of a run killer. You only, you only get one shot at it. Uh, and uh, I hope I've been practicing. All right, so game over. I'm gonna go ahead and um, save and continue. And I will start at the very beginning of Deku Tree. And I promise I have a much faster way of getting down now. I'm gonna get hit until he stops hitting me. One, two, three. And that trick is a mega side flip. I'm going to jump at the same time I'm taking recoil and that will give me a massive boost backwards. So. And then that lines up. So I essentially was supposed to do that kind of trick um, at the beginning, but I messed up and had to do the whole back, the whole backup deal, yo. So, anyways, the reason we needed bugs is because we need to recapture them here. Um, and now I'm holding a blue bottle, and uh, the blue bottle is very important because um, having a bottle in my hand allows me to do a trick. Uh, I'm going to explain it real quick before we go. And I'm going to do a backflip, and then if I pull out my sword and use the bottle at the same time, I will start using an ocarina item, which doesn't exist. I don't actually have the ocarina. And using the ocarina, it's going to prevent me from going into the blue portal. Okay, that is deep hat. So that is uh, one step here. All right, and I'm going to do what looks kind of funny. I need to leave this room on a particular frame. Um... And let's hope I got it. I did not get it. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a backup for this. Um, you do? I'm going to use the practice mod. Hey. So I can just do that. So um, I did not get the right frame, unfortunate. Um, essentially, uh, what was supposed to happen, I'm going to try it again. But like I said, that is a one-shot trick. If that doesn't work, then I will have to do this. So I'm going to do that there. This is a version with save states that gives me full control and I'm actually able to do whatever I need to do. So, unfortunate. You know, that's the reason I never submit this to marathons is because uh, it, does, uh, it does happen like that. Alrighty, so, uh, let me see here. I need to give myself a sword and a shield, and I'm going to give myself a bottle with bugs in it. There it is. And I'm going to give myself sticks, 
and nuts. And... Uh, let's see, let's see here. Warps, take me to Goma. Alrighty. Apologize for the inconvenience, folks. Let's see here. I have three sticks. I have uh, four nuts. Uh, because of the way that uh, cutscenes work, I think I do have to... Um, I am, in fact, using the classic controller. Um, and by that, I'm using a GameCube controller. I have to refight Goma. Um, otherwise... Uh, otherwise, the uh, thing won't work here. So I have to do this. It's all good, Shu. You do your thing. Alright. Wake up, Shuli. Choo choo! I think this will work. I didn't die. Well, that's not how that's supposed to work. <laughs> and then I have to warp back to. Uh, Deku tree from forest. I have to view this cutscene here. Uh, Okay. <laughs> I thought you would just—I <laughs> thought you just had to drop, but I guess it doesn't work that way. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> yeah, we have we have a uh, moon warping, moon jumping here. Oh goodness gracious! I'm sorry, I'm not I prepared. I rode my bicycle past your window last night. <laughs> <laughs> I am not prepared for this. All right. I really should have had a backup save. That's alright, that's alright. Alright, come on game, you got this. You got this game! Thank goodness this is the end of the night. I would feel bad if someone's run wasn't getting done because I had to do that. Well, even if it makes you feel any better, we still would have done it. Uh... <laughs> Alright, so that's the game over I was expecting to get. <laughs> now we can do this proper. One, two, three. What was that card bag thing that Shuli? It's a wee. Ah! <laughs> that was the uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, Foster's home for imaginary friends. Yeah. Thing in the jigger. Something like that. I heard him trying to shoot me from behind. She added me the day. He's like, hey, we're going to fight the Ender Dragon. Fighting the Ender Dragon with Shuli is a lot of... Wee! <laughs> <laughs> that, I imagine it is. No, I can tell you it is. I've been there. We, we've all been there. <laughs> All right. We should be ready to go here. 
Back in the same place. All the same stuff. This time with save states. Alright, I think I need two steps this time. Two steps this time. Bam! Slide to the left. Psh. Slide to the right. Psh. Crisscross. Psh. 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 Crisscross. Cha cha, real smooth. That was not it. Nope. Alright, let's try it again. Another concern. Sometimes you uh, don't get in there, but and sometimes you just get too close. Now that he's shown us the two ways it can go wrong, he's going to show us how it goes right now. Mm-hmm. There we go. So that's shallow. I definitely need two to get out. So do do. So throwing the Deku Nuts gives us, uh, delays our movement by exactly a certain number of frames so that whenever we walk through that hey! door, we get warped to the end of the game. Hot dog! Yep. So real quick, in the most briefest of terms, every door is marked by, like, four things, right? So it's like, if it's daytime or nighttime, adult or child, right? So those are the four things. So every door has like a, an index of like, depending on what category you're in, depends on which exit you go to, right? And certain ones have extra ones. Like, so because there is a blue warp in that room, that door has an extra, like a fifth exit. Um, and normally you're only supposed to exit and go to that cutscene where you get the Kokiri stone, right? Um, however, if you can leave on the exact same frame that you would normally be leaving with the blue warp and leave through the door back into the Deku tree, it just so happens that the fifth exit for that is overflowed and in, into Ganon's tower. So because it's looking for a fifth exit for that door, it's like, we don't know where to put you, so we're just going to put you at this door plus five. And it puts you in this one. So that takes you all the way to the very end of the game. It just so happens that you can beat the first boss and then go straight to the end. We were talking the other day on your stream about how much mileage this game got out of all of its cinematic cutscene type stuff. Yeah. Also, Glan like, has uh, has gotten to eat. He wants to thank I'm, all the donations, so thank you, Glan, for your... Thank me for allowing you to eat. Yes. <laughs> all right. Fun fact. If I touch any of these burning rocks, my Deku shield will burn, and because there is no burnable shield as an adult, the game does not know how to handle, because you are not supposed to be a child in this area. So if I touch any of those, the game will hardlock. So I can't do that. You just ate a muffin? Nice. Did it have bush eggs in it? Yes, I need to know what kind of muffin it was. Alright, so there I just did a trick where I, uh, I did an attack and then I interrupted the attack by talking to Navi. And uh, because of that, the hitbox for the sword was not put away correctly, which means it is out forever until I make another swing, right? So, because of that, I have my hitbox doing damage at all times until that's interrupted. Uh, and it's very handy. It's called Infinite Sword Glitch. I'm going to be using that a couple of times. Another thing is, um, because of the properties of the game and doing crouch stabs, which is the easiest way, or the only way, to uh, do ISG, is with a crouch stab, um, it maintains the properties of the last hit that you did. So this swing right there would be stored whenever I do a stab, crouch stab like that. Um, and Deku sticks are much stronger than my sword. So, oh, don't want to talk to you right now, we're going to escape! Don't hit me, rocks. Uh, and that's going to come in handy, because on the next section, we're going to do something that we should not be able to do. We're about to lose our sword 
um, but we're not really going to lose our sword. It's we're going to keep the properties on um, on our stick. Don't touch the rocks. Please, no Bernie. Thank you. All right. All right. We're not out of the woods yet. We do have to fight Ganon as a child, which is not easy. There's nothing else, though. Um, there's a lot less burning debris, so I don't have to worry about that one as much. But uh, it's not to say that it's impossible. Eating in front of your open freezer a spoonful of ice cream. Perfect. I have the mental image. Beautiful. That's maximum Coz. Also, you're a grown-ass woman. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do that. You know, there's only one part of it that I have a hard time envisioning. What's that? The standing part. <laughs> She's sitting down while doing it. <laughs> Dragged a chair up there. She rolled in there. <laughs> she got the knee board. Uh, yes, it is RNG a little bit. A lot of the explodey bits are kind of randomized. But yeah, this game did a lot with cinematics to really help sell it. You know, we just talked about it a minute ago, but, like, a lot of games don't have cinematics like that, and they look kind of cheesy. You know, the camera angles are really stiff, and they just kind of bounce around a little bit too much. And All right, let me do a quick save state here, which is a handy thing with the practice mod. Um, and I'm going to do a jump slash into the fight, and that's going to store the uh, uh, Deku stick properties on my sword but uh fun fact uh because this fight is meant to be done as an adult uh adults don't have the deku stick and so it has the properties of the master sword which does bonus damage against ganon so by doing that uh stick jump slash into the fight like that uh i have actually given myself the master sword and I can fight this in much, much faster. Because if I did it with the, the Deku Stick actually, I would do like a quarter of the damage, which means I'd have to hit, well, maybe it's like three or four more times, something like that. All right. I uh, didn't do that right. I definitely, uh, definitely ruined that. Would not focusing on that. Sorry about that. I uh, I did a I did a stick jump slash one more time just to be safe, and I uh, un I undid the master sword thing like I just said. I'm a silly bitch. What can I say? The cutscene so nice we had to watch it twice. That's right. I mean, look at the the cinematography. Like that's a Dutch angle. You know what I mean? Like, how many N64 games use the Dutch angle? What's the Dutch angle? It's a cantered angle. Like, when it's, like, not... It's not flat. It's like this. When it's sideways like that. Oh. And that creates a dystopian look. It's to give you a sense of discomfort. Tell you that things are not all right. All right. Pull out the stick. And then I did not do the frame-perfect trick for ISG. But that is the frame-perfect trick for ISG. There we go. I have to walk in front of Ganon every time, otherwise he'll sort of start spinning. Um, there we go. Alright, so now we have the Master Sword, quote-unquote, back, and it gets put on our B button, even though technically we shouldn't have that on our B button, because we're a child and we can't equip it. That's okay, we get that Master Sword back, we get the max Master Sword damage here. And my stick is just tall enough to hit Ganon's tail, even though I should not be able to hit it, being such a small size. And just like that, we've taken down Ganon for the last time.
35 minutes, good lord, I'm so sorry. <laughs> would you, if you were Ganon, would you feel cheated if you got beat with it by a child with a stick? Oh, I'm sure. There we go. Time, 35.51. Wowee! Hey, Oop. underestimate! <laughs> You'd be livid if you were Ganon, I, I guess. He's just mad about it. He's very mad. All right, and here we go. But uh, what would it take to see the Bongo Ice Arrows shenanigans? Well, I mean, how long y'all want to be here? Yeah. <laughs> Quick, t change it. <laughs> <laughs> now we gotta send this off so y'all can go to bed. Alrighty. We'll be back here tomorrow at eleven. That's right. That's right. Okay, well, that was kind of a dumpster fire, but, you know, I hope that you guys had fun. I hope y'all learned something, and I hope you enjoyed a showcase of sort of an older run that no one really does anymore. So. All right, CJ, want to take us back? Yeah, all right, guys. Let's go back to intermission one more time, and then we will find a place.